Massaging fungus into rice is one of the most crucial steps in making sake. After weeks of being soaked, steamed, and fermented, the mix will turn into junmai, a pure kind of sake that has no added alcohol or sugar. But fewer than 10 brewers make it with a 600-year-old natural fermentation method. Maiko Tsuji is one of them. But mass-produced sake made with cheap additives is threatening her business. So what makes this kind of junmai so special? And why is it so rare? Northern Okayama's high-quality rice and groundwater have made it a hub for sake brewing. Gozenshu Brewery has been operating here since 1804. Maiko is the seventh generation of sake brewers in her family. The brewery goes through 140 tons of omachi rice every year. Most sake rice varieties are created by crossbreeding other strains. This isn't the case with naturally occurring omachi. It gives the sake an earthy and herbal flavor. The rice arrives at the brewery already milled and polished. Michael and her team start by washing it thoroughly to get rid of any excess powder. The rice then sits in vats of cold water to soak, and every second is crucial. If it absorbs too much moisture, the rice will be sticky and not good for mold growth. The more polished the rice is, the quicker the water will soak in. Workers spend up to half an hour watching for a subtle color change. They know it's ready when the outside of the grain turns white. By the next day, the rice is ready for another critical step, steaming. Workers transfer it into barrels called goshiki. In the past, they were made of cedar wood, but those were replaced with aluminium ones in the mid-20th century. Maiko uses this wooden tool to spread the rice evenly. The cloth traps the heat and allows steam to escape. The rice steams for 50 minutes. Then it's time to add one of the most important ingredients, koji mold. It's a type of fungus used in many fermented foods like soy sauce, miso and vinegar. As the koji grows, it converts the rice starch into sugar. But for that to happen, the rice needs to be kept at a steady temperature. If it gets too hot, the fungus will die. This conveyor belt blows air to cool down the rice as micro sprinkles on the koji. Once the mold is added, it's a race to get the rice from the chilly brewery floor to the humid 33 degrees Celsius mold room upstairs. Workers spend an hour and a half massaging the koji into the rice, making sure the mold reaches each and every grain. Maiko never expected to make sake brewing a career. It's always been a male-dominated industry. In 2020, out of the 1,200 sake breweries in Japan, only 20 were run by women. It wasn't until Michael started drinking sake herself that she realized this was the job for her. 
、えっと、15年前ぐらいに、えー、私が当時になったばっかりの時の写真です。みんな本当に若かったので、経験もない中で本当に一生懸命、もう無我夢中でお酒作りをやってた、なんかそういう思い出があります。すはい。Michael and her team wrap the rice in cloth to keep it warm and humid. After two days, they pour it through a grinder to smooth out any clumps. The next step, called Bodaimoto, sets Maiko's brewery apart from the competition. While most sake brewers today add sake yeast during fermentation, Bodaimoto relies on naturally occurring yeast. It's a method that largely went extinct in the early 1900s. But Gozenshu Brewery has worked hard to bring it back. And it's what Maiko says makes the sake here taste savory. So, it's what Maiko says makes the sake here taste savory. So, it's what Maiko says makes the sake here taste savory. So, it's what Maiko says makes the sake here taste savory. So, it's what Maiko says makes the sake here taste savory. It starts with special rice water, rich with lactic acid. This chemical kills off harmful fungus and creates the perfect environment for yeast to grow. Then workers add steamed rice and some of the koji rice to make the yeast starter called shubo. Then it's time for fermentation. Over three weeks, Michael adds more water, koji rice, and steamed rice to the mix. The yeast from the shubo will convert the sugars into alcohol. Maintaining a consistent temperature is critical at this stage. A sake can ferment only between 0 and 12 degrees Celsius. So, Michael and her team check the temperature twice a day. She knows the mash is ready when it begins to smell fruity. The mash is then pressed and filtered through this machine. Filter のようなものにそのもろみを通して透明になった液体お酒とあと酒粕に分けていきます。But before the sake can hit the shelves, Michael takes samples to her lab for analysis. Here she tests for acidity and alcohol levels right after fermentation. その作ったお酒をお客さんが飲んでくれて美味しいと言ってくれた時にこの仕事をやってよかったなと思います。The art of turning rice into alcohol dates back 7,000 years to ancient China. It came to Japan in the 3rd century BC. At first, Japan's imperial court made and regulated sake. Only officials and religious leaders could drink it. But the fall of the imperial court in the 12th century made the drink more accessible. By the 17th century, there were more than 27,000 brewers across Japan. The sake industry's peak came in the 1970s when machines and factories allowed for mass production of the drink. But demand for sake has dropped as Japan's aging population drinks less and younger people opt for other beverages like beer and wine. From 1973 to 2022, yearly domestic sake sales fell by 76%. 日本酒業界自体が今落ち込んでいるので、Michael and her team produce 20 different sakes here. She says it's been difficult competing with cheaper breweries for a piece of the market. Traditionally, sake is made with only water, rice, Koji and yeast. But rice shortages during World War II caused many breweries to add alcohol to increase their yield and sugar to enhance the flavor. Today, Michael says cheap sake has taken over the market. While the average bottle of sake ranges from $7 to $34, Gozen Shu's premium sake can cost up to $200. Michael says most people can't taste the difference between the high quality drink 
and ones with additives. Meanwhile, artisanal brewers like her have found it hard to keep up. Michael decided the best way to survive was to keep her focus on quality and tradition. Slowly, she's seen more and more customers looking for her sake, and today, 10% of her sales come from buyers abroad. And she's not the only brewer experiencing this. While demand for sake has been dropping in Japan, it's growing in other markets like the US, Europe, and other Asian countries. In 2022, Japan's sake export sales surpassed $300 million, reaching a record high for the 13th year in a row. Local bar owner Koji Soda says Michael Sake has also become a favorite among his customers. え、一番好きなお酒。あ、そう Koji hopes more people will appreciate the importance of sake to Japan's culture. Michael's sake has also received recognition across the country. In 2022, the brewery's best seller, Mimasaka, won first place at a sake fair in Japan. <laughs> While she does not know what the future holds, she is determined to keep the legacy of traditional sake alive. Japanese 